Welcome to today's session. It's midnight at my place. I'm a little bit sleepy. I had a coffee and now I have a sugar drink in front of me. I'll try to do the best I can with this next 90 minutes. It's a short time, in fact, for me, but I'll see what I can do. Thanks to Dr. Jeffrey for organizing this seminar. Thanks to all of you who joined on site. I'm jealous of you as well as remotely. In my regular weekend market recap videos, I show how you and I can swing trade profitably in any market condition, up, down, or sideways, going long, going short, standing aside, by taking only truly highly probability trades that are also of low risk. How? By aligning maximum forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental, technical, and even seasonality sometimes in their favor. I'll conduct a market recap today. That's the easy way for me and probably the best way to demonstrate the programs I use. Difference is that in the regular recaps, I do not use any slides usually. Today, allow me to use some, as many of you may not be familiar with the queue systems and therefore not familiar with the jargons that I use. Q systems, what I needed to trade, that was the beginning. And now what I have and how I use them. I needed a system that I could use in the USA market, the biggest of all, broadest of all, deepest of all, and also global markets because I am an Indian, non-resident Indian residing in Thailand. For more than 20 years, I worked in Singapore. So I wanted a way to trade in both USA and global market systems that supported that. When I started trading more than 25 years ago, what I realized later, of course, that I was buying at the very top along with the irrational exuberance that was there at the market top. I was buying there and I was cutting my loss at the market bottom. I never knew how to find turn around this like in Canslim or Eureka in HSI. I evolved over time. Now I have a way to understand irrational exuberance using signals. They are part of Q systems, not necessarily invented by me, but now I have them. I needed it, I have it. In the beginning, I started trading after reading a book by Dr. Alexander Elder, Trading for a Living. That was mostly a technical analysis book. I loved it. I later on bought all his books. In any case, he did use market internals a bit, but later on I realized that market internals tell the true story of the market. Not of everything, but of the market. That's why in this list I put market internal at the top. Everything that I do every day or every week, the starting point is to answer this question. Two questions. What is the market trend? And what is my preferred trading direction? They may be same, they may not be same. And that answer comes from market breadth, looking at it from multiple angles. Of course, I continue to look at the external view using the futures, indexes, or market ETFs. Those are technicals. Then I came across CanSlim, and I realized that not just buying technical stocks at a proper buy point, but buying in strong industries, strong sector, or maybe at least industry, that is enough, increases the probability of success by a large percentage. So 50% of trading success comes from being right on the market, about 20 to 25% comes from industry rotation. I incorporated that in my own trading. Fundamental was the thing that I incorporated last. Initially, I started with Dr. Alexander Elder's system. So fundamental was not really a part of that. But I will show you today that if I buy technically strong stocks in strong industries, 
that are fundamentally strong, they outperform if I buy fundamentally weak stocks in the same industries. So fundamentals matter. What I needed was to find out a way, a simplistic way to find strong fundamental stocks. And of course, CanSlim does it quite well. I developed a system because I wanted to use it in global markets as well. Technicals are of course part of any trading system, including mine. And when I watched Dr. Jeffrey's videos, I saw him using seasonality in some stocks like Netflix in January, year after year. So I thought, why not I include that also as part of my system? Do I use seasonality all the time? No, but I'm just one click away from checking the seasonality. So I check that before I place a trade. Few jargons. Indicators are what we everybody know. They are either dots or colors or lines on Q charts. Why I came here is to introduce the color coding. Green is bullish, cyan is bullish, red, magenta, bearish, yellow, neutral. If a line is going up, bullish line is going down, neutral. And that color scheme is true, not only for the technical systems, but also across all the other systems, sector industry rotation, fundamentals, seasonality, etc. Indicators are the building blocks. They tell something about a stock. Pattern is something broader. Pattern may include multiple indicators. They may span multiple days. Patterns tell us a market situation. So indicators tell something, an item, and pattern tells of a situation. And these situations may be used by traders as a preferred situation. What could be one pattern like that? Stocks coming out of squeeze that Dr. Jeffrey mentioned in yesterday's session. Fan out could be one pattern, indecision could be one pattern, etc. Those are market situations. And then there are trade setups. They are neither indicators nor patterns. They are actual trade setups that come from the scans in meta stock or come from radar or scans in trade station. These trade setups are based on unambiguous checklists. And that unambiguity was important for myself. Whether I look at it, you look at it, Dr. Jeffrey, my son looks at it. We will almost always come to the same conclusion. And I wanted to create a system like that. One example, watermark is a pivot. We just gave you a name. Pivots are well known to everybody. That is an indicator that can act as support and resistance. Now, when a stock is reversing, from the two edges of a sideways market from watermark pivot support resistance, it may be accompanied by an indecision cluster. The indecision cluster is not a trade setup, but it happens usually before the trade setup comes. So it gives an alert. So a stock goes up, hits the resistance, shows indecision, then it starts to drop right at the upper edge that is a box trade setup, a trade setup that I use for a sideways market or at double tops and double bottoms. I will show you, try to show you a live example, how I scan for box setup with indecision pattern. Box is just one setup. Let's see how many of these kinds of setups we use. Flow is a trend following setup. Again, Dr. Jeffrey mentioned it, we all know it. A stock is going up, higher, high, higher, low. Try to buy at the bottom of the swing just as it's starting to go up. Higher, high, higher, low. Try to buy it just as it is starting to go up. This is exactly what Dr. Jeffrey showed his study. That is a trend following long setup. I think everybody trades that. Pullback is a setup similar to flow in the sense it is trend following, but it requires to be in an uptrend 
and pull back to a major support like 50 day MA or in Q systems I use one yellow line yellow direction line some moving average so that is a pullback trend following setups are known to almost everybody everybody uses them trend is our friend I use them too now comes the breakout setup these breakout setups are breakouts from trend line resistances that are drawn automatically. They may come from a few days back. They may come from 10 years back. They work remarkably well as support and resistance, and therefore, a breakout from them to the upside or downside are also significant. I'll try to show live examples of that box I already covered. Hedwin is a kind of unique trade setup that comes right at the top of an uptrend. Stock is going up, then suddenly a signal comes at the top. That is a headwind possible reversal signal. It's not a setup. It's an indicator. It's not a setup. But we have a checklist for headwind setup. Headwind signal is a part of that. If all the checklist conditions are met, unambiguous checklist conditions, then we are okay to take a short trade. And lastly, bounce. Sometimes a stock drops suddenly and sharply to where a pre existing trend line support was already there and it bounces up by right at that point. Flow, pullback, breakout box, headwind, pound. Six setups. There is one similarity in all of them. Never trying to catch the falling knife, always buying the low point. It can be a swing low, it can be a pull. It can be a sideways market low. One exception, breakout. Breakout is not trying to catch a low. It is a breakout from trend line resistance. By definition, it is not necessarily trying to catch the low. And that is why I scan for breakouts. But if the stop loss is a bit far on the chart, all the systems are visual. I just look at it. If it is a bit far, I don't buy outright because usually we know from can slim after they break out more often than not, it pulls back. I buy at the pullback point usually using a flow trend following long setup. So six setups, all are not indicators, not patterns, but they're actual trade setups. They can be scanned for. I'll do that in live demonstration later. I developed the systems for myself initially on Meta stock, and then as I was trading actively, and I still do today, in the USA market, TradeStation is a brokerage, a great platform. I use both of them, only two platforms. Support everything that I needed to do. For data, TradeStation has its own data, but only USA market data. For the global markets, and that includes USA market too. I didn't cut corners. I developed it for myself. So I went for the best data that was available at an affordable price to retail traders like me. That is Refinitiv Zenith. 100% real time making every Q analysis across all dimensions. 100% real time. I like that. The systems can be used in different workflows and I use many of them, not all of them. I Mentioned top down. Top down investing, well known, popularized by many, many entities, including Cancel MHSI, Dr. Jeffrey. I also do bottom up, starting with the technical breadth, not technical scan. I didn't say technical scan, technical breadth, visual analysis of what is going on technically, then go up from there. Or I could do fundamentals first. There are advantages to each of them disadvantages to each of them. Fundamentals first may help to reduce the potential number of stocks to a very small number. And that can be then put into TradeStation's radar. If any of you are using TradeStation, you know not too many stocks can be put into TradeStation's radar. And where I am living in a remote village, 800 kilometers away from Bangkok in Thailand, I cannot put more than 50 stocks or so on radar. 
So it is useful for me to use fundamentals to reduce the number of stocks I need to scan on radar. Seasonality first is possible, not something that I use. But if somebody is hardcore follower of seasonality trades, it is possible to look at only bullish seasonality trades starting from there. You could do a custom workflow. Now, one thing that is common across all these workflows that are there that I use is that in the end, all will end up being a 360 degree trade, meaning it will be a strong fundamental stock in some ways. I'll see that, show that. It will be in a strong industry in some ways, two ways. I will show that. It will be at a technical buy point and of course the opposite for shorting. There are a lot of complexities, calculations and concepts. When I developed it, I didn't want to be concerned about that. So everything is hidden under the hood as much as I could resulting an easy to use system. Complete, I thought unambiguous was my requirement. Easy to use, why easy to use is very important for me because any of us who are trading for 10 years or more, we know and contrary to what I started thinking when I started trading, it changed a lot. The platform really doesn't matter whether it was Metastock or TradeStation or maybe Incoswim or any other reasonable platform that allows me to scan, that allows me to chart, I can use that platform, doesn't matter. Then I thought systems matter a lot. Not really. Any decent system can do the job. What matters is the trader. He's or her discipline and the technique. The technique is very important. Whether I'm just a technical trader or a top-down trader, meaning I'm looking at industries and fundamentals too, and technicals, that matters. The techniques matter. And then the trader matters because without the discipline and the risk management, everything else will fail. So I wanted to focus on that last two part the most. The discipline and risk management and let everything else be as automatic as possible, as easy to use as possible. I trade from my village. I share my analysis always before knowing the results. On Twitter, YouTube, there is a traders forum on my website, Traders Club, always before knowing the results. You may know something about the trades I take from there, and I will show the systems, but I'll not be able to show everything. There is a page on my website, Learn. Everything that I do with the systems I use, that is there in the Learn page, including 10 hours plus masterclass videos. These are finally the systems that I use. Q-Elite on trade station, only for USA market, you know that. Q-Global and Finder for USA market, as well as global market. Those are for technical analysis, charting and scanning. And then what I call dives, diary. I mentioned, and this is one part I will not show, but this is probably one of the most important part to maintain a trading journal to see what I need to improve, what I need to keep as it is. Chris also mentioned a signal or a trading system. Even a trading system is only part of it. I still need to size my positions. I need to click the buy button, short button, sell button, cover button at the right time. Am I doing well? The Q diary shows that. Very important part of Dives program, but this is what I'll not show. Index is used to do index constituent analysis. There are practical use cases, I'll come to that. Vital is for fundamental and peer analysis. Edge for sector industry rotation analysis, season for seasonality analysis, many programs. And on the right, there is something extremely important. Why? Because that helps me identify the turnaround points or the through days. It helps me identify market tops, market bottoms with remarkable accuracy, Q market breadth. 
many programs. Is it a product from me? No. It is the result of input, suggestion, query, sharing from many traders across the globe over many years. To whom I am grateful, Dr. Jeffrey Scott is at the top of the list. Mr. Ian Woodward, whom I never met, but you will see many of his concepts are inside Q systems. May him rest in peace. Dr. Alexander Elder. I started trading after reading his books, Can Slim. Influence of that is there in Q. I buy Can Slim growth stocks. I'm equally comfortable buying value stocks. We'll try to find some trades like that if I have time. And many others. I'm grateful to all of them. Greetings. I'm Sagan Nandi, retired IT professional, swing trading stocks in USA and India markets. I will try to answer any questions if you have. If I don't have time, you may please email me to any of these email IDs. I will certainly reply. My website, Xandel, where I share regularly YouTube channel. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. I'm not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. Options trading can be risky. Doesn't have to be. You may refer to the characteristics and risks of standardized options document from OCC to decide if options trading is suitable for you. Now let's start with the system. Today I'm constrained by two monitors. The air condition in my working room is not working. I moved to another room, so I have only two monitors. I'll keep on looking at the notes I made in preparation for today's session, so please bear with me. Let's start looking at the market, this week's market recap. Let's start with the external view. SPY. This is exactly what I see. I'm using Tristation sometimes, Metastock sometimes. In the weekly, it is going up. It is in an uptrend. In daily, it is in an uptrend. At the top, in daily, I have indecision cluster. Remember, I mentioned about indecisions. Indecisions cluster at the top, that is a very signal, but not a trade setup. So I look at this and I ask two questions. What is the trend? What is my preferred trading direction? Trend uptrending, everybody can see that. Preferred trading direction, none. Because it is showing indecision cluster, I'm not going to buy. And there is no short setup. Q, Q, Q. Same thing, I will not take much time. Uptrending, no preferred trading direction. Already far above swing low. I don't buy when it is already so above swing low. By the way, at the bottom, again came the indecision cluster. And I was watching it and I anticipated that the price would move up though I was not knowing why it moved up. There were not many impetus on the market, so I thought, but the indecision clusters told that it was more likely to go up. But right now, uptrending, no preferred trading direction. Two are trending up. What about Dia? Dia is not trending up. It is inside a box, and it is right in the middle of the box. Right in the middle of the box is a no trading area. So trend sideways, prefer trading direction, none. Dia is clearly underperforming the other pockets, QQQ, SPY. We can see that from relative performance also tilting down. Small cap IWM. It is also moving sideways, but not in a box. It is inside a triangle pattern in both weekly and daily. When it is inside a triangle pattern, I need to wait to see if it is breaking down or breaking up. For breaking up, it will take quite a long time. And if it breaks down, it will come to other supports. 
So train sideways inside triangle, prefer to drink ratio none. That makes this market not so easy to trade for swing trading. None of the market ETFs are allowing me to trade in either direction, but that is only the external view. What are the internals telling? Now, trade station allows me to see the internal breadth for NASDAQ and NYSE in real time. And these are intraday charts, five minute charts. Every day during market hours, this is what is running on one of my monitors. What I see, I see how the QQQ or you could use the futures symbols, how they are moving after the open relative to the opening range. And then I see the advanced decline, up down volume, new high low. New high low doesn't change much throughout the day. It's a 52 week new high low, but advanced decline, up down volume changes. And what do we see? Just looking at one glance, what do we see? Nice was weaker because up down volume was below zero line throughout the day, not so for NYSE. Initially, it tried to go up, then fell down. Advanced decline was below zero substantially for both of them. So from the beginning of the day, though SPY went up, though QQQ went up, I knew that if I wanted to buy, I would not buy SPY. Whether I would buy QQQ or not is a next question. For example, if I'm trading ETFs or futures, but I would not buy SPY. That is using the philosophy, buy the strongest, short the weakest. But these are two composites. I can also see the same insight for the four different pockets for small cap, Russell 2000, Dow Jones Industrials, NASDAQ 100, S&P 500. And this is equally important if I'm trading futures. Which one was the weakest on Friday? I will not spend too much time. IWM was the weakest. Which one was the strongest? Dia. That is the internal picture, very important picture. But if I'm trading futures, I need to also make profit by trading the actual price move. So I look at the internals and I try to align that with the actual futures moves. If they are aligned, I trade. If they are not aligned, it is best to stand aside. If the internals are not supporting the externals, futures trading is going to probably make more loss than profit. And the internals are very useful in that way. These are very useful features from trade station that they allow us to see the advanced decline breadth of the major indexes and also the composites, but this is real time. What I need for swing trading is more detailed view. More detailed view across many things. And here comes a single chart with many colors, green, cyan, bullish, red, magenta, bearish, yellow, neutral. If there is a color. Okay, let's. I'll not go through all of them. Remember the masterclass videos are there. Hindenburg Omen. Earlier, Dr. Jeffrey mentioned also in his session, after Hindenburg Omen, markets used to pull back. Sometimes a lot, sometimes not so much. But nowadays, it does not always pull back. And the reason I believe is that nowadays, only a handful of stocks could remain up to keep the market ETFs indexes futures up. So when the series of Hindenburgs came one after another, QQQ did not fall down, SPY didn't fall down, but a lot of stocks sold off. That was not so when Hindenburg was first devised, first invented the signal. That time, if broad market fell, the indexes fell. Not so now, but that does not reduce the use of the system because a lot of stocks fail during this period. 
lot of stocks fail even in this period. What to do? Not to buy those stocks. If I am allowed to short, I do that happily. I would short them. What it is telling as of this week is that we have an irrational exuberance. Remember when I started trading, I was buying only in irrational exuberance. Now I know a bango signal has come thanks to Mr. Ian Woodward. Market is at or near all-time high, but it is also showing irrational exuberance. What is happening under the hood? Let's see the percentage of stocks above 50-day moving average. From here to here, by the way, this candle chart is a total view index of indexes. It's the holistic view of the market using a custom index. That went up. We saw already SPY QQQ straight going up, the IWM mixed. The custom index total view went up. What happened about the percentage of stocks above 50 day moving average? Initially it went up, but then it fell down. Fell down from where? Late April, early March, more than one month. For more than one month, we are having sell off, though the indexes are going up. The percentage of stocks above 50 day MA is an extremely useful oscillator. Whenever it hits the extreme threshold lower point, it's time to buy. Works like a clockwork. Whenever it hits the extreme threshold upper point, it's time to book profit on longs, start to look for shorts. Works like a clockwork. After it hits the top, it always comes down. After it hits the bottom, it always goes up. What goes up? What comes down? This line, what is this line? Percentage of stocks above 50 MA. What does it mean? Many stocks come down from the upper extreme. Many stocks go up from the lower extreme. Doesn't mean the market goes down when the yellow line comes down. What it means, a lot of stocks come down. Those are profitable swing trading short opportunities. Another oscillator that is faster than 50 day MA by the way, everything on this chart, every line, every dot, every color is about breadth, not about a single instrument. About thousands of instruments plotted together on one chart. The other oscillator that is a faster oscillator than 50-day MA, percentage of stocks above that, but works like a clockwork again. Dr. Jeffrey mentioned that he, he uses 13-week high-low, new high-low, but I use three-month new high-low. Every time it hits the upper extreme, you will notice one thing. Everything is visual. I'm not looking at any threshold. I'm not trying to set parameters. I'm just looking at the extreme lines, the bands at the top. Every time it hits the top, time to look for shots because some stocks, not the market, but some stocks will certainly come down. Every time it hits the bottom, some stocks will certainly go up. Which stocks? I can find that out. How can I find that out? Because from total view, I can drill down. I'll come to that. Other than Hindenburg, Bango, there are Phoenix days, heavy selling days across the board. If Phoenix comes at the bottom, it is time to look for a reversal. See, earlier when it was sell off, I was cutting my loss at the worst possible time. Now I know if the Phoenix comes at the bottom, at the bottom, it has to come at the bottom. Look for sell off more. Then comes bingo, what Mr. Ian Woodward called throw baby out with the bathwater. Not the time to buy yet, but then comes Eureka, a GSI, Mr. Ian Udar's equivalent of follow through day. That came in this case with accumulation count. Anytime an accumulation count comes, that is more than two, it is significant. Once they're colored in yellow, more than two will be colored in green. Extreme highs will be colored in cyan. Accumulation count will almost always accompany the Eureka day. And sometimes Eureka may not be signaled, but accumulation will always show up. If an accumulation day comes after sell-off shown by bingo, 
sometimes maybe eureka at the bottom sorry phoenix at the bottom let's say follow through day start by so we have all these signals many of them thanks to mr yan nudwan and i mentioned i am able to drill down from here to know the exact pocket by the way there is also growth versus value line showing now let's read it now growth is outperforming small cap versus large cap small cap is underperforming so what is doing better now is large cap mega cap growth now we know why qqq spy are at or near all time high because mega cap large cap growth are doing well overall market is not doing well we know that from here know that from here which one is doing better nyse or nasdaq by the way the hindenburg bengo bingo phoenix eureka they are calculated on both nasdaq and nyse and in the total view they are aggregated i'll not go through the entire chart again but i'll just point out that between these two both are actually looking weak percentage of stocks above 50 ma coming down coming down more in nyse probably the mega cap tech stocks are helping to lift the technology sector overall to some extent it is still coming down but nyse is coming down more we know if we want to short what kind of stocks we want to short still at the market level but we can drill down further to look at the major indexes <laughs> i sometimes do that by mistake i close the intermeter stock give me one second i'll open it up i am going to drill down further into the major indexes breadth very useful if i am swing trading futures which i do not but i do swing trade etfs very important also to find which pocket to buy stocks let's open the major indexes breadth i am sorry about that my meter stock crashed i am running everything from a laptop i mentioned not from my work desk yes please Mm -mm. okay true okay okay what i did i okay i i got ready actually for that possibility so i captured the snapshot as of the weekend i can now see i'll not go through the entire detail but i can now see which one internally not externally externally we already saw from the etfs futures indexes but internally which one is the weakest which one is the strongest and how did i use it when i had the market recap right at this point dow jones industrials this oscillator by the way again this is one that i incorporated after watching dr jeffrey's video many of the things i incorporated from his videos three month new high low was there and it needed some time to get used to trade this contra directional trade so right when Dow Jones Industrial three month new high low hit the lower extreme I publicly stated that I bought Daya and did that with a profit before that when it hit the upper extreme I publicly stated once again everything is on twitter everything is on youtube I shorted Daya right at that time and did that swing trade also profit extremely valuable that's why when I discuss the different components I put the internal breadth internal health check above the external view of the market but that is not all we looked at the internals and we figured out that probably the mega caps are doing better that is what is lifting the market up why don't we look at the mega cap index to ascertain if that assumption so far it is an assumption looking at key with qspy at a very high point whether that assumption is true we can 
find that out from Megacap Custom Index. And yes, it is looking very similar to SPY and QQQ. So now that hypothesis is ascertained. What is the trend uptrend? What is the preferred trading direction? None. It is in an uptrend, but it has bearish indecision cluster at the top, not a time. I'd like to buy. I cannot short because trend line support is nearby. And Dr. Jeffrey mentioned about leaders. I have to be careful about closing. The leaders custom index is also on the Q breadth charts. I found the leaders by using Q edge. Q edge has the sector industry rotation. I looked at all the 11 sectors, found the strongest stocks, and I found them when the market was already in a strong uptrend. I found it here. And how is it now? The leaders index is moving sideways. Another thing I like to point out, in a strong uptrend, a stock only has uptrending trend lines, no downtrending trend lines. But now I see it also has downtrending trend lines, means what? Means it is inside a range now, and it is not in an uptrend anymore. We can also see that it is inside a box, but it is also inside a wide triangle pattern. So the leaders are, weaker than the mega caps. And leaders are big companies too. So we know why and how the market ETFs, futures indexes are high, not because the broad market is strong. What can I do with that information? There is another program that is running always on my computer during my trading hours is a market percentage chart. This also came into existence because of input from one of the Q traders, Mr. John. He's an avid futures trader. And he noticed and he told me that, of course, you know that the mega caps have tremendous impact on what? NASDAQ 100? Very large impact on S&P 500. So if I'm trading futures, and if I see mega caps, for example, on this day, if I look back, they were up throughout the day. That is not a day to short NQ. That was not a day to short. This is NQ, this is SPX or ES futures. That was not. When mega caps are strong, go long for NQ, ES. If mega caps are choppy, stand aside from trading those. In fact, all the other pockets were also chop choppy on this day. By the way, the last day here on the right is Friday. Yesterday, I was listening to Dr. Jeff T. We had a break. I captured this snapshot at that time. As of that time, around 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, what it shows is that the dollar was up. If dollar was up, we would expect the market to do poorly. And yes, the mega caps were down, small cap was down. QQQ, SPY were down less, DIA was up. Useful information. Useful information if I'm trading futures, because if I wanted to go long, I would like to go long YM. If I wanted to short, I would short RTY. Useful information also for stock traders. But for stock traders, instead of looking at the market percentage in this way, across these pockets, US dollar, the four futures, then mega cap custom index, I would use a slightly different view for stock trading. I would like to see how value is doing versus growth, how small cap is doing versus mid cap, large cap, and a mega cap custom index. This is as of yesterday again, value was up most. Mid cap was up most. What am I going to do if I'm trading stocks? In real time, based on this information using Q systems, I will look for 
value stocks. Remember, I told I am perfectly okay to buy value stocks. I am not only growth stock trader, no reason to do that for me. And I would also buy mid caps. Unambiguous, easy decision. I would like to focus on discipline and risk management, not on what to trade, how to trade. Now, once I decided that, how would I actually go about finding the trades? Not difficult. If mid-cap is doing well, what I could do instantly, I could go to my constituent analysis, index constituent, find out how the mid-caps are doing. Remember, that was a real-time market percentage chart as of 10.30. And of course, what I'm looking at now is after the market close. I don't know mid-caps closed bullishly or not. But again, the first snapshot I'm going to get is a breadth inside. Not, I'm not even looking at mid-cap index chart. The first thing I'm looking at is how the breadth is from one month and during market hours, this left column would be in real time. Now it is one day, one month to 10 day to five day to two day, one day. It is all red. So I don't know how it was during market hours. I'm looking at it now, but this is not allowing me to buy. No point for me now to look into actual mid cap stocks or actual value stocks. Can there be some buying candidates there? Yes, I can see some green percentage across the board. But if I am buying only in strong market on Friday, I would not like to buy. This is for mid cap. If I wanted, I could go into the mid cap stocks and then find out value stocks from there. How? There is a stock scorecard, and this is a stock scorecard that I can generate in 100% real time for any country in the world for thousands of stocks at a time. This is all the liquid stocks that I trade. This is my trading universe. I focus only on them. I run scans only on them. I don't run scans on the entire market. I trade only this 1,627 liquid stocks as of now. This has a lot of information. Everything is color coded. And what we are seeing here is the front end. In the cache, everything is calculated in real time in market hours. If I move to the right, there are other panels, performance panels, growth panels for earnings revenue growth, five years, last four quarters, fundamentals, parameters, etc. But this first panel is called vital panel. Why? Because it collects information from all the other panels. 80 to 90% of the time, I need only that. It has smart action buttons. They are smart. They know, they anticipate what I'm going to do next and then smart filter buttons. Let me explain the filters a bit. And here I'm going to show, probably proof that why having fundamental as a trading dimension helps. We saw from mid caps that the breadth is bearish. No point trying to buy bullish stocks. I will come to the fundamental scorecard, but I would like to look at something else. I would like to look at something else. Why? Because I want to ascertain that analysis that I saw so far. The external view said that ETF switches tell is difficult to trade in this market. The internal view told that other than mega caps and large cap growth stocks, market is quite weak. Let's ascertain that further. Here is sector, industry, stock, breadth from one month to one day during market hours. This will lit up with real-time data. It's red. That's all I need to know across the board. It's not a market to buy. Can I buy still? Yes. <laughs> I'll probably try to find some stocks to buy. I'll also explain exactly how I may or might have already traded them with almost almost guaranteed profit. I'll explain that. But wind is not on my back if I'm buying in this market. Whatever the market futures are telling, indexes are telling is different. Under the hood, breadth is of utmost importance. That is telling it is not time to buy. We could stand aside. We could look for shots. Bucket analysis. We could look for shorts, but is it oversold? No. 
this is now showing one day versus two day during market hours it will show today real time versus yesterday the percentage of stocks below lower bollinger band is nowhere close to 30 40 percent not oversold 72 percentage of stocks are below mid bollinger band went down further from one day ago that's a bearish market not oversold that market is telling i'm allowed to short but before coming to that final conclusion, I would like to look at technical breadth. Because finally, if I'm doing directional trading as I'm doing, if I'm doing swing trading, I can make money buying stocks only if the stock goes up. I do trade options in other ways, but swing trading stocks, I can make money buying stocks only if the stock goes up. So I need to understand how the technicals are. I could look at individual stocks. I could scan hundreds or thousands of stocks but I would like to look at the technical breadth. And the longer term direction is always important. So let's look at the weekly technical breadth. Run across what? Again, the same liquid stocks universe. You could have your own trading universe. I run it on my liquid stock universe. Weekly view, always important. Longer term view, look at the color. I'm going to read it out. All trade setups, strength setups means what? Either a gap trade setup or breakout. Trend continuation setups means what? Either flow or pullback. I refer to some of them. Reversal setups mean what? Either headwind, box, or bounce. I gave these names earlier. Across the board, it is bearish. And on top of that, there is an alert. If the cells light up, it is alert. It's showing headwind. Headwind is a unique signal that comes at the very top before the possible down move. If this cell lights up, the market may pull down further. That is the weekly view. That is telling me not to buy. That is telling me to short. What about Friday's view? Across the board, red. Not a time to buy. Time to short. Can I still buy stocks? Yes, but the wind will not be on my back. So now that I have ascertained that it is time to short, not time to buy at the market level. Now it is time for me to show that why fundamentals matter. Here are all the liquid stocks. And there are lots of statistics. Masterclass videos have everything. See what happened on Friday. 75% of the stocks were down, 24% were up. These are all the stocks. And then I have a filter, one star, that will, red is bullish, of course, green is bearish. Red is, if I click red, what it will do? It will try to find either overvalued stocks, this color, or stocks with large negative earnings growth. Or three star will be overvalued with negative growth. And diamond will be, overvalued with negative earnings growth with negative revenue growth at the same time. So what it means is that these are fundamentals of increasing weakness step by step. One star red, three star red, diamond. Let's see how the percentages change. The exact same thing you could do in a bullish market. Click the one green, three green, diamond, and you would see how the percentages change. Let's do this for the bearish market now. Notice the current percentage. 75 percentage of all liquid stocks are down on Friday. If I click one star, now I am applying a condition. What condition? Either it is over or it is high negative earnings growth in the last quarter, year over year. The percentage down increased. That shows fundamentals matter. If I included or condition either overvalued or negative earnings growth percentage increased on the downside to 77. What if I change to three star? That means it will find stocks that are overvalued and with negative earnings growth. Now the percentage increased from 77 to 84. Fundamentals matter. What if I change to diamond with negative revenue growth too? 100% stocks are now down. The exact same thing you could do in reverse in a bullish market. 
for as long as I remember, every time I do that, maybe few exceptions when junk stocks do better, very rarely you will see that by choosing fundamentally strong stocks for buying, the percentages improve. By choosing fundamentally weak stocks to short, percentages improve. It takes me only a few more clicks, gives me enough number of trades. That's why I use fundamentals as a dimension and I have simplified it. Either look at valuation or look at earnings growth. I don't look at the numbers. I click the buttons. It gives me the stocks. And yes, sometimes I buy dividend paying stocks. That is another dimension I use. Now, I don't know if Dr. Jeffrey already covered it, but I think he has. I couldn't attend whole uh, yesterday's session. I feel asleep. Box stocks, some concept that came from Mr. Ian Udward. I could look at all the box stocks with a single click in real time. Of course, now market hours is closed. These are the box stocks, different boxes. Instantly see the percentages changed. Now less percentages came down. So even in a down market, box stocks do better. So box stocks are a special category of high growth stocks. High growth stocks I could find from one star or I could find from quarterly earnings growth and annual earnings growth. So there are many smart filters. I could look for stocks that are having short squeeze potential where funds are accumulating and others. I will not go through all of them. This is a scorecard. How do I generate this scorecard? Remember, I showed constituent analysis. If I think mid-cap stocks are doing well, I created the breadth chart for mid-cap stocks. Then I could create a scorecard for those. So I could come to this scorecard from constituent analysis. I could also come to this from a peer analysis. So if somebody says, let's say NVIDIA, it's doing well, extremely well, of course. I could take NVIDIA as a root stock. I'm not starting with an index. I'm starting with a single stock, NVIDIA. I type the ticker symbol. No data is stored on my computer, and it will need to do multiple fetches. First, it is confirming that is NVIDIA a valid ticker symbol. It has found the ticker symbol. Now it is getting data about the stock. Well, it has created a scorecard of the stock. Now it is retrieving all the PR stocks, all from Refinitiv, 100% real time. I could do that for any stock in the world. Once it finds the PR stocks, it will send a last request to retrieve data of all those PR stocks. But while it is doing that, let's look at the scorecard. It is overvalued. That is nothing uncommon for a high growth stock. However, the earnings growth is coming down. Not a reason for me to short it. I can also see instantly it is a box one stock. Eventually, it will come down some day. Today is not that day. Extremely high earnings quality. There is a short squeeze potential. Now, short squeeze potential in a stock that is near all time high, that has a different meaning from a short squeeze potential in a stock that is near 52 week low. At 52 week low, short squeeze potential is a buy signal, well, possible buy signal. It's not a buy setup, but it helps in buying. If a stock is showing high short interest, short squeeze, but at the top, that means somebody, not small person like me, somebody is starting to short the stock, something to take note of, but not the time to short yet. Why I'm saying that? Because like you, I'm also looking at NVIDIA almost every day. Let's look at it. I will be happy to short it. It will give a short setup. Every growth stock goes up like a rocket, eventually comes down like a rock. There is no short setup. What is the trend? The same two questions. What is the trend? Uptrend. What is the preferred trading direction? None. It is way ahead of recent swing low, or if you want to consider the gap up, it could be here or here. Still, it is far away. This swing low is far. I'm not going to buy anything that is so far away. And it has a possible headwind reversal signal, not a setup. 
I'm mentally applying the checklist in the weekly daily. There is no short setup at the top. I will try to find a headwind reversal short setup. You will find a stock right at the very top can be shorted with minimum risk. I'll try to find that out if I have time. Coming back to scorecard. Now it has created, retrieved the data for the 43 PR stocks in semiconductor industry. And now I see actually the industry is not so strong. 86% of PR stocks went down. Well, I already saw NVIDIA charts. I'm not willing to short it because there is no short setup. But this 86% of 43 stocks came down. Maybe there is a short setup. So I could drill down into that. But before that, I would like to look up what is the relative score of the industry. Yes, in itself, the industry is weak. I know that. You know that if 86% stocks in an industry is down, the industry is weak. But relatively, is it weaker than others? That answer comes from QH. Let's look at the graph first. And I mentioned one thing about usability. See how seamlessly, easily I'm navigating from one program to another and carrying out the what I call 360 degrees analysis. It could be top down, it could be bottom up, it could be fundamental first. In this case, I'm doing fundamental first because I started with a peer analysis of NVIDIA. First, look at the graphical form. Semiconductor score coming down, percentage performance negative for multiple time periods. I'm not going into all the detail. Alternate industry score coming down. I would also like to look at not only the five day to one day and then during market hours again, the real time will also fill up. I would like to look at the longer term rotation of the industry. Learn from cancelling. Instantly, I know semiconductor industry is not an industry to buy now. Objective analysis based on most reliable professional quality data from Refinitiv, no second guessing. This is not an industry I'm going to buy. What kind of industry I'm going to buy? I'll come to that. Let me have a look at my notes. Why don't we do a top-down analysis. This is not an industry I like to buy. What would I like to buy now? I showed one fundamental first workflow, then stopped at this point that I cannot buy. But the industry is telling, okay, let me spend a few more minutes on this fundamental first workflow. It is telling it is actually a possible shorting industry. So I could go back to NVIDIA's PR stocks. Remember I said, we could generate the scorecard from different ways. Now this is the scorecard of the peers. If I'm going to short, I'm going to click the one star red button. Okay, many stocks are down. I can see that during market hours, real time will fill up. Let me try weaker stocks, three star. I still have number of stocks. I could look for short setups in them. How? I'm not looking at charts yet. See, chart looking will be the last step. I came to trade station. I could go to Metastock Q Finder. Now, there are different radar implementations in trade station. I could drop the stocks using the radar called Q Setup. What Q Setup does is in real time, goes through the stocks, find any trade setup is there or not. And even if I have hundreds of stocks, the ones with trade setups, bullish or bearish, these are the trade setups, remember, they will float to the top. The one with the maximum number of setups will float to the very top. One glance, there was no trade setup. I have trained myself not to find things when things are not there. I don't want to find trade setups. I want the system to give them. My focus is on the market. My focus is on risk management and discipline. And remember, even if it gave five stocks, five trade setups, my focus is on which one to short, if, if I had any short setup. But none, that exercise is done. Now let's continue with the other workflow. Let's do a top down. I already looked at the market breadth from multiple angles, internal health check using Q breadth. 
NASDAQ, NYC, total view, market indexes. I looked at technical breadth. I looked at sector industry stock breadth. I decided it is time to short. But there are some industries, some stocks that are up. Maybe there are some buying candidates and some people would like to only buy. I, I, I actually have some long positions. I have no short position as of now. But let's do, for demonstration's sake, a top-down analysis. But I already know from the graph here at the bottom that on Friday, everything was down, all sector. Well, then no point going through the top-down analysis. From the sector level, everything was down. What I could do is go directly to the industry level. Then find out the strongest industries in relative score. Usually, I stick with the top 20 industries during market hours real time, or these base columns show accelerating or decelerating industries. I'm perfectly all right buying into an accelerating industry, which was weak earlier, now turning around. I love turnarounds. I can find out fundamental turnarounds from the Earnings growth, revenue growth graphs. I can find out industry turnarounds here. I can find technical turnarounds from the reversal trade setups. Well, if it is time to short, we can see all sectors were down. Why don't I try to do top down to find possible short setups? Sort by one day performance. What are the weakest two sectors? Utilities and materials. You know, once I get used to it, you get used to them. Instantly, I know materials is the one to look for shorts. Why? Not only it is the weakest, it is also the most decelerating. Doesn't happen often. If I have a sector that is not only weakest, it is decelerating most rapidly, it is down also. These are relative scores. I know it is clearly down also on Friday the most. That is a sector I'd like to short. Because it is decelerating also most rapidly, I am hoping to find some stock that is at the very top or maybe in the middle, but somewhere. I, I will have lucrative shorting opportunities. Why I'm saying that? I'll have to look at the charts, but from the sector rotation scorecard, I'm thinking I may have some shorting the top opportunity because. I have most deceleration also, okay? Materials is a sector, broad one. Let's drill down to the industries, one click. Sort them again during market hours. I'll do it on real time. What is the industry at the bottom? Gold. Not so long ago, gold was doing well as a commodity. Gold mining stocks, because this is not the commodity. Gold mining stocks. Now it is the weakest. No second thought. I would like to try to short something in here. Now, from there, I would like to actually go to all the liquid stocks universe, which is in Cube Vital. I don't want to spend time to generate it. So I closed it and I am opening it. I saved the liquid stock universe code card in Vital. I showed you that. So I I just reopened this, okay. So I have the liquid stock universe already generated to save time, I'm using that. I come to industry, I just do a single click. I am left with the stocks in this gold mining industry. All the liquid stocks. What percentage are down? Industry. Rotation matters, right? The percentage is now 100%. 100% of liquid gold mining stocks are down. Industry rotation matters. It is already 100%. I could not do any better by finding weak fundamental stocks, but I never trade without fundamentals. Why should I? I just have a single click. I am left with four stocks. Do I need to look at their charts now? No. I could look at their technical setup if it is there on QLE trade station or 
I could look up their setups from Finder that is part of Metastock Q Global. Go to the bearish daily. There are actually three stocks out of those four, three actually have possible trade setups. So at trade setups, remember I showed these setups earlier, flow is a trend following short setup. One of them has a gap setup. I mentioned about the patterns. Two of them are having a move out of squeeze pattern. All of them have a bearish fan out pattern. Now, now is the time to open the chart. So I have already done fundamental analysis. I have done sector industry rotation analysis. I have done technical setup analysis. Now is the time to look at the charts. I could look at them anywhere. Let's look at them on Metastock. Click one button. The latest version of Metastock will open multiple charts at the same time in a tabbed view. And this is how fast I can decide. My focus is on trading discipline, risk management, not on the charts also. I see a trend line support is there. So I'm working on the process of elimination. Support is nearby. I never ignored them. I'm not going to short it. I could add it to watch list. Tomorrow, if it drops, which stock WPM, or Monday, if it drops, I am probably happy to short it. But I didn't look at its weekly yet. I'll come to that, but WPM is one. I'm going to pin it. Let's look at the other two, AGI. This one has more uptrend, more supports. So between WPM, AGI, I prefer WPM. And lastly, FNV. I like this most. So I close WPM, FNV. Why I like this most? Remember I told, I never want to short near trend line support. I never want to buy near trend line resistance. Here, the trend line support is far away. Trend line resistance is nearby. And I have a flow setup. I know I have a flow setup from scan also. Now is the time to look at its weekly daily. FNV. Top down approach in 100% real time using color codes. I like to short it. No other thinking. Just one second look at it. I'm looking at it live. Weekly coming down, bearish backdrop, daily has a flow short setup. We already know that. That's how I found them. Yellow direction line, trend line resistance, support far away, relative performance coming down. Now is the time to open the diary. Probably the most important once we have a trading system that is reasonably good to do the sizing, decide the stock, decide the target. If the reward risk ratio is one or more, I'm happy to trade. And looking at the chart, I know I can get reward risk ratio of one from this stock. But before going to the diary, before clicking the buy button, now is the time to do a final look on the stock because see i look at the stock in the tabular view that is also good enough but i'm risking my hard and money i retired so i would like to have a single page scorecard the same scorecard that was in tabular view but it will have some graphs i like those graphs it will have a single page scorecard if it allows me to retrieve data from Refinitiv in real time, sometimes during weekends, and especially when I'm doing my webinar, even more so when I'm in the seminar, it doesn't help me sometimes. But today may be my lucky day. FNV, it has generated the scorecard. Instantly, I see something. I can know also large cap, small cap, mid cap from the color coding. Here it is a large cap stock, not a small stock. It is overvalued stock. It is having negative earnings growth. From the graph, I know earnings growth coming down. Revenue growth coming down. I love to short a stock like that. And before that, I also looked at the dividend yield, not a high dividend yield. If the dividend yield was high, I would be reluctant to short in, in this market or in any market. So for fundamentals, I'm happy to short. Now is the time to make one click to have a final look at its industry. Okay, gold, okay, this one, this one industry. So yes, gold, we already know that gold mining, uh, I'm able to short. Fundamentals I looked at and remember seasonality. 
one click. Let it retrieve data from Refinitiv again, generate the seasonality. I have set it to 20 years of data. Only looking at the color coding, this is the current month. By month, there is no bullish or bearish seasonality. Bullish will light up in green, bearish in red. Same color coding everywhere. So seasonality is not in favor, not against me. Not anyway a major factor in my swing trading stocks. So I have found a shorting candidate in a market that I think is weak enough for shorting. And that stock is FNV. And as I do during market recaps, if I found it, okay, let me save it somewhere. I removed the sidebar from here to give more space during the seminar. So FNV is a shorting candidate that I found using top-down analysis. What about bottom-up analysis? Can be done equally easily. And I'm going to start with the daily technical breadth. It is bearish. We already saw that. So I would like to go to the bearish trade setups. All these stocks, 231, has one or more bearish trade setup. Am I going to look at 231 stocks? No. Remember, my focus in my life is not to spend time in finding trades. My focus is to decide which one to short, which one to buy. You have multiple candidates. My focus in deciding trend and prefer trading direction. And even more focus is on sizing and risk management and discipline. That is where my focus is. So I am not going to look at 231 stocks. One click, I'm going to look at their fundamentals. That is another way I could generate a scorecard for a list of stocks. Stocks that are having possible technical trade setup. I'll have to look at their charts. But before looking at hundreds of charts, I'm going to generate their fundamentals. Remember, I mentioned fundamentals often can reduce the stocks list to look for trades. So if it sent it to, no, it didn't. OK, give it a few seconds. Zoom is running, and so many programs are running on my little laptop. And that's good for me. Let me have a look at. Okay, it is it is generating the scorecard. No problem. What I want to do is while it is generating, let me go back to the technical breadth. Remember, these were the patterns. Actually, here they are all in small capital. Made it for myself, easy to understand, easy to remember. It can be in price extreme, high, low, or middle. That is useful. If I'm looking to short, sometimes if I'm doing bottom-up analysis, I just click this green paint bar that gives me only the trade setups coming at price extreme high. Those could be lucrative shorting locations. Some traders like Dr. Jeffrey or Mr. Mark Minervini, myself also, love to trade squeeze moves. And because I came to the bearish setup tab, I have all bearish squeeze moves. They are low risk and probably high momentum, high magnitude bearish trades. These are patterns and the setups are here. Mr. Ron Brown, I used to listen to him when I was using HSI for a while, often mentioned, maybe mentions even now, about fan out. If fan out is my favorite, I could look for only fan out. I could just flag for fan outs. I could look for flag for squeeze moves and my list comes down drastically. But now what I am doing is generating the scorecard for those all 231 stocks that have a possible short setup. This is the stock. 
hundred percent went down. Of course, hundred percent went down because they all had possible short setup. So I cannot improve that by clicking one star or three star or diamond, but I would like to short only fundamentally weak stocks. So I clicked one star. I also want to see which ones are down, all of them are down. I am left with 107 stocks. I'm, I'm reading the numbers from here. But I don't want to look at 107 stocks. I'm clicking one button to look up the industry score card of these 107 stocks. Why? Because 360 degrees analysis, bottom up analysis, top down, everything will end up with same objective, find weak stocks across the board. So I'm looking at only top, uh, in this case, bottom, bottom 20% in score or for this session, let me also highlight bottom 20% in deceleration. Let's leave at that. So I didn't want to look at even those 107 stocks. I wanted to look at only those among them which are in weak industries. Now I'm left with only 49 stocks. Now I may look up there, technical second. Why I went back to technical second? Because of these 49 stocks, now let me sort by squeeze move. Only two have squeeze move. Now is the time to open them. This is weak. I'm certainly not going to buy it. Go, go. But let me look for a candidate I would actually like to short in real life if I had the chance. Not that one, GameStop. No. So once I am eliminated these two stocks, I delete them. GameStop. Let me eliminate. Went down by 39%. Not a stock I'd like to short. Not a stock I'd like to buy. It's now flag for breakouts. Well, I love breakouts. Let's see if they give short, short candidates that are low risk. So I am left with 14 stocks. I could open them, but remember, I told that if I have stocks at price extreme high, those can be lucrative shorting opportunities. Breaking down from the price extreme high, what are these stocks? These are in the weakest industries in terms of score or deceleration. These are all fundamentally weak, either in terms of valuation or growth. They are coming down, breaking down from price extreme high. I could open them, but let me go to trade station. I don't want trade station to feel bad, not that anybody from trade station is watching. I came here because I wanted to show that if I put the stocks here, and this I could do in real time, of course, radar works in real time. The ones with trade setups will automatically float to the top. How do I know that? If I put, for example, B, B let's put a stock that doesn't have a trade setup, BHC. I think it doesn't have a trade setup. If you give it a few seconds, BHC doesn't have a trade setup, should float to the bottom. Yes, it did. Thank God. During seminars, things sometimes don't work, but it worked. So what does it mean is I don't want to spend time finding trades. I have hundreds of stocks. I can actually handle 50 or so, but you may, Dr. Jeffrey said 500 trade. The ones with trade setups will float to the top. I may click on them and find trades from there. Now, I also came here because there are other radar layouts. And sometimes I may look for more signals. I'm getting ready to trade. Maybe they have trade setups, maybe they don't have. But here in the other radar, I have the same trade setups in all capital, same patterns in all small, this also trade setup. Then I have other signals. Meaning what? Meaning that even before I open the charts, I get a lot of insights from these columns, what is going on. And I didn't look at these stocks. Uh, how am I doing? I have some time left. Let's look at these stocks. 
and because I'm using one monitor, I have to flip back and forth, CCJ. By the way, you see the same calculation is on Metastock and Trade Station. These are at price extreme high. Now the trend lines calculations may be little off sometimes between the platforms because some may be looking at aftermarket close data, some may be at market close, but no problem. Let's look at some of these stocks, CCJ. Instantly, it is breaking down. That's what I looked at. It is at price extreme high. By the way, what these band indicators do, they collect information from many other Q charts. You don't have just this weekly, daily, have many other charts, but the essential information. Remember Q vital. The essential information is in the vital panel for fundamentals. For technicals, the essential information is actually in this chart called entry chart. We confirm the trade with a backdrop weekly chart. The essential information includes price extreme. So that's what I searched for, price extreme high, breaking down. There was a bearish headwind at the top, but am I going to short it now? No. All these signals are used additively. If there is a support nearby, no short, okay? So I'm not going to go through the entire list, I think there was a stock I wanted to share. Okay, why don't there are not many? Let's see. TTD. See, one instance. I am eliminating. The moment there is a trend line support, yes, one support was broken at price extreme high, but another support is nearby, not going to short. Okay. Two or three more stocks, OSW, TXRH. Actually, this one is more ready to short because actually it is quite good to short. In fact, for me, why? Because there was a bearish headwind, possible reversal signal. And after that came a false upside breakout at this watermark pivot resistance. A reversal from watermark is useful for shorting but a false upside breakout is even more useful for shorting. But a reversal, false reversal at watermark would not be a short candidate here unless this trend line support was broken and it is broken as of Friday. Weekly allows me to short because it is also looking like creating a false upside breakout. It is at price extreme high. So now is the time again to look at OSW. Look where, and probably this is the last stock in this group I will go into. OSW, the time to look at its one page scorecard. No, not that one. OSW. Sometimes if definitive takes a few seconds, it's good for me. I can look at my notes and have a sip of this sugary water. Yes, yes. And you are all in big cities with high-speed internet. I'm in a remote village in Thailand. But in real life trading, it doesn't matter. I'm not day trading so much. I do sometimes day trading. But if I'm not running Zoom, if I'm using my desktop computer, it is fine. Okay, if it is taking time, I will not wait for that. I wanted to show one stock. I think I noted that down. Noted two stocks down. In fact, OSW, we already know it is a weak fundamental stock. That's how we found it. We know it is weak industry. So if it is not connecting to Refinity, let me check the symbol, OSW. Okay. While it is trying to retrieve data, let me show two more stocks. And then I may share some buying candidates, NTST. One look at this stock, and this is also a breakdown candidate. It is also a flow trend following 
short setup because lower high, lower low, and break down both. Weekly allows me to short, breaking down that triangle pattern, breaking below trend line support. Now, this is a different stock from the other stocks I shared because it is not at price extreme high. It was moving sideways, not at price extreme high. It's giving a breakdown setup, NTST. What stock is this? By the way, OSW, let's go back. This stock had a short setup. What stock is this? Small cap, overvalued, has high earnings growth, but that is fine. I'm allowed to short based on either valuation or earnings growth. Specialty consumer services and its industry score, one click away. Allows me to short. In fact, I knew it because I was doing this analysis. Now, last step before clicking the short button, I wanted to look at that particular industry, that particular scorecard. And this stock that I shared, NTST, a possible short candidate, but not at price extreme high. I just shared the technicals. And if I came here, why not also come here to look at the radar in TST? In TST, see what radar tells us. What I mentioned on the chart, it has a breakout and trend following flow short setup. Momentum is bearish, direction is down direction, came down with bearish pressure. High volume, relative performance is bearish. From open down by 1.6%, from close, close to close, different, more to 3% 3, 3 plus. So what is its fundamental scorecard? Always I'm looking for 360 degree straights. So I think I found this as, a, as an example of a trade that is breaking down the triangle not at price extreme high. I already showed some price extreme high. Scorecard is generated, allows me to short instantly because negative earnings growth, earnings growth coming down. Now, see, good to look at the scorecard. Instantly, I see dividend yield is 4.9%. So though other things, technicals, growth may allow me to short, whenever I see high dividend yield, not only in this current market condition when interest rate may go down, but in general also 4.9% dividend yield stock, I don't want to short because I have plenty of other stocks to short. That's a good example also to carry out the entire analysis and see what I'm doing. I'm trying to stop. I'm not trying to find it. The moment I can find any reason to stop where the support is nearby, not short. Dividend is high, don't short. Industry strong, don't short. I'm finding reasons not to trade. So NTSD, I eliminated. Good example, I came to that. Well, let's come to another stock. For my own market recaps, I don't prepare so much, but for Dr. Jeffrey's seminar, I did. I spent a lot of time to find some of the examples of different types. And if it is giving error, I have to pause and play so that it requests definitive again. And you can see server side error. Sometimes during weekends it happened, it didn't retrieve the PRs. So that is fine. At least I have the stock scorecard. This is a different kind of example I wanted to. It's overvalued stock. Dividend not high enough for me to not short, so I'm able to short it. High growth, high growth but I am allowed to short based on either valuation or growth. Valuation is allowing me to short. And this is a particular example I wanted to come to. Forest products is the industry. I didn't get the PR scorecard. Trying one last time. And while it is retrieving the PRs, I am clicking one button to look at its industry scorecard. Fundamentals allow me to short. And this is what I love. I love turnarounds, both for buying the bottom, shorting the top. 
this industry used to be one of the strongest for a long time. Now, not only it is one of the weakest, it is also one of the most disillusioning. Remember the gold mining stock we found? Forest products is telling that this is an industry to short. No second guessing. What is this stock's fundamentals overvalued? Now is the time to look at its charts or look up its technical signal. Let's look up its technical signal and I'm mixing between Tristation and Metastock. It actually has a box set up that is a sideways market or double top short setup at price extreme high with indecision pattern. Remember when I discussed the differences between these three concepts, indicators, patterns, setups. I mentioned I will try to come to an example. This is the example, LPX. Now is the time, last step is the time to look at the chart. LPX. Short candidate. And this is also an example of a headwind short setup. This is a very unique signal that tends to come at the top. And I'm applying the checklist conditions in my mind on weekly, daily, both. It actually has a possible headwind short setup. And I'm just pointing to something. It has a possible box short setup. Another pattern I will share, I have shared many times. If a stock is at price extreme high, let me remove all the lines. If a stock is at price extreme high, it is already at a very high level relative to its historical move. Then if it comes to jump thrust high, it is not at jump thrust high, it is at jump high. I think Dr. Jeffrey mentioned about that also. Some of these concepts, as you can see, I incorporated many concepts maybe slightly different implementation. So if it is at jump thrust high, at price extreme high, then comes this parent of all bearish momentum, three big move down. I have not seen it to fail. A short setup at that, it has to be proper short setup. And if it is in a weak fundamental stock, it is a short candidate. It is a weak fundamental stock. Now, it is still in an uptrend. And this is a good example of a trade that is a reversal trade. And I'm quite comfortable taking them. If I go to Finder, let's put LPX on trade station also. It has a possible headwind reversal setup at the top, box setup at watermark resistance with an indecision cluster at price extreme high. It also had a gap down open. And there are other signals. Now, these additional signals, other than the setups, other than the patterns, they are on trade station. What if I'm using Metastock? If I open LPX here, the Q Global has a program inbuilt, expert commentary. And you can see headwind didn't come here. There are sometimes differences between the two systems, Tristation and QLED because of the platform difference. But I can see if there is a trade setup by reading the commentary. And it is telling that yes, it has a box sideways market, a double top short setup. This is a commentary. This reads the chart just like I would do. And I developed the programs or, or, or somebody developed it for me. Below setup is the pattern analysis. It is telling it is at price extreme high and it has a bearish indecision. Remember what I mentioned? Indecision is an alert that comes before the actual trade setup helps us get ready. And I could find those stocks with indecision patterns beforehand. I could get ready, meaning what? Meaning on Friday, I could short it in real time. I didn't have to wait for market close. I didn't have to certainly wait for Monday. Now, another thing I will mention, trading system is just a system. Platform is just a platform. Finally, we have to trade. We have to decide, are we going to short? If I'm going to short 
am I going to short using stock or options? Now, my approach is if a setup is trend reversal setup, like in this case, I prefer to use short call vertical. Short call vertical with maybe 40 days to expiry gives me enough time. I don't get whipsawed away and I don't have to worry about stop loss because it is a defined risk strategy. So for a reversal setup at the top, I prefer short call vertical. Never, of course, never, never I do naked short call. Naked short put is okay. Naked short call. Oh, yes. Let me find out two stocks and I'm going to share two stocks that I shared publicly already in the market recap of last week or on Twitter. These are two stocks I would not mind buying. And why I would not mind, let me try to explain. One stock is PEN, P-E-N-N. -N. I can type the ticker in small case or small capital, large capital, doesn't matter. Let's see if Refinitiv helps me this time. While it is retrieving the scorecard, let me plot the chart. PEN is one stock, P-E-N-N. -N. I shared in the last market recap. Pen Entertainment, Casinos and Gaming Stock. Remember, I mentioned when the Hindenburgs kept firing, many stocks came down. Yes, the market ETFs didn't come down so much. Certainly not QQSPY didn't come down at all. But many stocks came down. Those were shorting candidates all along. But now they may be giving some signals to consider buying. In the weekly came this unique possible reversal, bullish reversal. In fact, it came here. It's a weekly chart that gave to an enough up move for a possible buy swing trade at that point. But that was then. Let's look at now. Headwind reversal bullish signal. Prior to that, backdrop was neutral, then bearish, turned bullish for many weeks. Last week, it was bullish shape, bullish color. This week, color is bullish. Now, in the last market recap, when did I identify and share it? In the last market recap, right on this day. Why did I share it? Because it gave a possible flow long setup on that day and also a breakout long setup. And you would ask me probably where is the breakout here? Because there was a trend line resistance earlier that is broken now. But I mentioned there are other chart templates. Let's look at pen. By the way, this, are, this template I am looking at now, it's a intraday chart template for intraday trading i don't use the same chart as daily weekly i have a separate very fast responding chart template for that that i use for futures or etf trading or stock precision entry this is that chart i'm not going to go into that why i came here is to show why one week ago i shared it as a breakout long setup because it broke out of multiple trend line resistance right at that time, how far? I mentioned that I am a bit reluctant to take breakout trades because the stock may be little far away. So could I still trade it? Yes, I could use what? Short put vertical. Or if I was confident enough to hold pain long term, I could do naked short put. Or at least I could do short put vertical one week ago. And on this Thursday, it gave a buy setup again. What buy setup? Let us find out. We had a possible flow long setup one week ago on Friday, and this Thursday it gave a flow setup again. This is a flow setup, not a signal. This is the signal. And by the way, uh, this is a good use of Q Global on Metastock. If I open pain.o on Metastock, because I have the commentary, and the commentary actually allows me to look back. Sometimes the trend lines get broken, but you see these buttons here. Currently, it is showing me as of Friday. What it is showing? No trade setup, right? I just look at one glance. If I go back one day on Thursday, what did it have? It actually gave a flow long setup. So I could find that in real time. Of course, I cannot go back and buy that now on Thursday, but I did buy it on Thursday. I bought it in real time. Why? Because I was ready with the stock one week ago. 
I was waiting for a low risk entry point and now may not be a bad time to look at the intraday pivot chart. How did I actually enter it? I was already ready with its fundamental technicals in the morning. I used five minutes interval. No second thinking. Morning, five minutes. This is Thursday. It created an early range high, early range low. Everything is in the masterclass videos. The moment it break out of the early range high, I am long the stock. I bought the stock. In fact, at the close of the day, I had about 4 to 5% profit by precision entry. And this is what I call precision entry into a trade. It's a swing trade, not a day trade, but precision into a trade that I already identified one week ago in the last market recap. Why did I identify one week ago? Not only because it gave a breakout flow setup. I didn't take it because the stop would be a little bit far. Precision entry has the advantage, very big advantage for me, that for the day, the stop is so narrow on five-minute interval, I can get stopped out many times, but I do not get stopped out on such trades that I have planned beforehand. Let's look at pain, and you can see server-side error. Sometimes Refinitive has my internet, no problem, or my internet may be slow. I'm not able to look at the peers, but it is an undervalued stock. It has huge negative earnings growth, but relative to the previous quarter, it is a huge improvement. I like this turnarounds in earnings growth, like this turnarounds in revenue growth. I like turnarounds. And just one glance, I'm looking at the color codes. Insiders are buying. Fundamentals, these things allow me to buy. What about it? Okay, by the way, it has a short squeeze potential. Remember, short squeeze potential in a stock that is at a very low price, that is going to help me in buying. But what about its industry score? The signal came on Thursday, so I would look to Thursday's industry score. Well, by Friday also, it is bullish. Industry is also a turnaround industry. I love turnarounds. Casinos and gaming, no second guessing. Pen is a buy candidate for me. I would like to trade it with short put vertical. And I will share one last stock. And, you know, trading system is just a system. We need a good system that allows us to scan and find things. Platform is very much a platform only. But what do we trade with? The technique approach is most important and instrument choice is important. And I'm going to explain that in this talk, BHC. In fact, some will say it is a potential acquisition candidate. Well-known stock, Bosch Health Companies. I shared it on Twitter. What am I seeing it here? <laughs> by the way, by the way, if, if I looked at it without Q charts, let's look at it. BHC. Sometimes I do that. I look at it with a clean chart, not that one. BHC. Even my typing, it's popping up on the other monitor, it's getting slow. But allow me a few more seconds. BHC. Let's look at it with a simple, clean candle chart. Who would like to buy this stock? Not me. Not me. Not if I looked at this chart. But I am not looking at the stocks using that chart. I have this chart. What it is telling me in weekly, it is at a long-term pivot support. It is actually below the pivot support, but if it goes up a little bit, it will create a very valuable and powerful false downside breakout. In daily, it is at price extreme low, at jump thrust low. What does it mean? At price extreme low, it was falling down rapidly. What I need is a big bullish momentum. That has not come. But in absence of that, I am perfectly okay to buy it if it can break above the trend line resistance. They work very well, support resistance. Therefore, breakout is also important. And why I tweeted it? I tweeted it on this day because the possible headwind reversal signal came. That was not a setup. That was a signal. And what I am waiting for is to 
have a breakout. Now, how will I trade it? That is the more important thing, more interesting thing. Am I going to buy the stock? Am I going to short the put? Shorting the put is possible very much in for my trading at least, of course. We have to know our risk tolerance. It's a very low price stock, $6.20, $0.27. But in any stock, I can do short put vertical. I do short put if I'm willing to hold it long term if required. But I also looked at its option chain. And these are the interesting things. This, I think, can be a merger acquisition candidate. It is showing good valuation. Did it? OK, no, I didn't show that, right? Let me calculate its fundamental scorecard. And I check the seasonality. Every stock I trade, I click on the seasonality. It doesn't have much of a seasonality, bearish or bullish. But I like the scorecard instantly. Great valuation, short squeeze potential. Again, short squeeze at a low price level is good to have for buying. And I like this earnings growth improving. I like this revenue growth improving. I'm always looking for turn around. This is a turn around in the graphs for earnings revenue growth. Fundamentals allow me to buy. It's a pharmaceuticals stocks. That's a defensive stock sector. Market is not very bullish under the hood, but pharmaceuticals is a defensive sector. Okay, so far so good. One more click. Let's look at its industry scorecard. One second. Pharmacy, I'd like to buy this industry. Second guessing. So I found two stocks at very low price levels that I may buy. Pen is a stock that has given a setup already. I'm long. I am having about 45% profit already. I shared that one week ago. This one I shared based on the headway. Now, Interesting thing is, I check the options chain. Now it is June. Now it is June, early June. If I sell, if I buy the stock and sell a call option eight months away, that's a long time. But if I sell a call option eight months away, that is strike seven. Strike seven. Quite a distance from current price, far out of the money. But if I sell the Eight month away, seven strike call, I get about 12% premium. Annualized, that is 18% premium. So I'm getting annualized 18% premium by selling considerably out of the money call. And I think this stock last eight months is more likely to go up or not than not. And it is far out of the money. My percentage return on an annualized basis on a Good fundamental stock is more than 20%. I'm happy to trade it. I have some money in fixed deposit bonds. They give 5 to 6%. I'm happy to take out some money from there. Don't need to. I have trading account. But if I wanted to, that is my thought. This is giving me with a high probability, not guaranteed, but high probability, 18, 20, maybe even 30% return, depending on how quickly it will move up. It moves up quickly. I don't have to use wait for eight months, I can close that trade. That is the interesting part. It's, it's, it's okay to have any platform. It is okay to have any decent trading system. So long as we have trade setups, then our personal skill in stock picking, if we have multiple stocks, which want to buy, especially if they're in the same industry. If we want to buy, what is the instrument to use? If we are using options, can be risky, but it has a lot of benefits. And I actually have, I didn't wait for the breakout. I actually have a covered call position in BHC. For next eight months, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'll not take more time. I think I demonstrated most of the systems and different workflows. That is what I do every day. Don't want to spend much time on the trading system also. However, I like it. Thank you for attending.